Welcome back everyone, today we have got quite a lot to get into, because covenants, as it turns out, are rather big. After this video though, you will know what's up with them. So, covenants are one of the main features of the Shadowlands expansion. Each of the four covenants has its own progression, max level narrative campaign, and a set of player power that comes in the form of soul binds and then the covenant abilities. You will be able to dabble in each covenant as you level though because you'll be allowed to field test two of their abilities, one of which is a utility focused ability that everybody gets with the other one being a class specific ability. So that's what's up there, but at max level you then will unlock soul binds for your covenant and they unlock another path of character progression. These soul binds are essentially sets of powers that you work your way down and they are themed after each of the three covenants covenant characters that you level up with. Each of the soul binds then has got these conduit slots that take either potency, finesse, or endurance conduits, and conduits are basically just things that you can earn by doing things like dungeons, and they will grant you further character power, which of course will give you a little bit of customization. So when making this, Blizzard's core idea is that you select a covenant, and then that covenant really themes your expansion, right? It's essentially your base of operations in Shadowlands. So once you join this covenant, you get your abilities, and you begin to learn about your soul binds and start the campaign, your main goal is to actually earn renown levels, with renown levels really being your big thing for your max level progression, because they are tied to both cosmetics and also player power. Now there are 40 renown levels as of the launch of this expansion, and climbing through these levels will unlock you many different rewards. And throughout today's video, you are going to understand how these elements actually work in-game and the kind of gameplay that you'll be getting up to. Basically, how you actually do covenants, you'll get the full view. That's what we're doing today. And speaking of cosmetic rewards, this is our November loot. Also this, we've got the 2020 uh, channel pin. We've also got the Demon Hunter pin. And yes, over in Patreon, and of course, uh, if I can grab it, we've got art, there's other stuff as well. Um, yeah, we do monthly, uh, you know, sort of loot on our Patreon, one of the things that we do there. And uh, yeah, that's what this month is. And man, I mean, these pins, oh, there's such a nice luster to them. It's very, very satisfying. It's been very cool, you know, people sharing with us their art walls and things like that. And of course, everything here goes straight back into the channels and game development. And uh, believe me, that art team is up to a hell of a lot more. And there's a reason why our Shadowlands launch content lineup has been so damn chunky. So. Thank you for your support. It has been absolutely incredible, and uh, you're going to continue seeing great stuff come out of our team. So thanks to the team, thank you to you, and with that said, let's go. Let's begin with the beginning of Covenants, actually joining one. Well, it's really quite simple. Once you hit max level and you complete the leveling campaign of the Revendreth Zone, so complete all of its chapters, the game will move you along to the point where you're in a room and the Covenant uh, NPCs are about the place and you're able to make your choice. Now, this Covenant choice is decently important. It is one that can be changed at a later date, though. Now, doing that will involve you perhaps having to re-earn some lost power, but to actually make your Covenant decision, it's really simple. You just go to that room in Oribos, you talk to the Covenant NPC of the Covenant you would like to join, you follow their dialogue, and that will be it. You will have joined them. And don't worry, the game will guide you into doing all of that stuff. Now, you can then actually freely leave the Covenant that you've joined with zero penalty and join a new one. Of course, you will be starting off from scratch at that new Covenant, but otherwise it will be quite a fast process. Re-earning your lost power, especially in the Renown system, won't take that long either, but that's for reasons I'll explain later on in this video. Now, there is one thing that is a bit harder, and that is rejoining a Covenant that you had previously left. Because in that case, the Covenant will be a little bit pissed off at you. They won't really trust you because you left previously, so they will then make you do two sets of weekly quests. Now, these quests are just a matter of filling a progress bar by doing rares, events, world quests, and dungeons for the zone of the Covenant that, uh, that you want to join. So that basically is the Covenant joining and leaving system. With that said, let's get into the primary progression of Covenants, which is the Renown system. 
Renown is one of the two primary methods of progressing your covenant. The other one is the covenant sanctum upgrades. And don't worry, we'll cover them all in today's video, but we are going to do Renown first. So Renown is basically the most important one. It is your primary means of covenant progression. It dictates what soul binds are available to you, which is very important if you think about player power, as well as how much of each soul bind that you've unlocked that you can actually go down because the soul binds get more rows added to them as you progress through the Renown levels. Renown is also tied to things like the upgrade cap on unranked PvP gear, as well as the item level of of world quest gear rewards. Beyond that then, it controls how much of the Covenant campaign you are actually able to do, and that is important because that actually is the stuff that unlocks the Covenant gear set that you can actually use that's got stats. Beyond that then, there is an alternative tint of that set that is a renowned reward and is purity cosmetic, as well as other cosmetics such as mounts, cloak transmogs, transmog illusions, companions, and more. So that is what Renown is. You might then be wondering, well, I want more of this Renown. How do I actually get it? And what is my weekly gameplay going to be? Well, let's answer that. You get two Renown levels per week by doing each of two weekly quests. And these are available at your Covenant Sanctum. They're pretty simple. One of these quests will be to gather 1500 anima for your covenant, and the other one will be to free some souls from the Maw. Now, you will typically have perhaps, I'd say, 500 anima a day available from just doing world quests, and that's not even counting in the boost of around 250 that you get for doing each daily calling. And by the way, callings are just the Shadowlands name for emissaries, which are those meta quests for doing a number of world quests within a zone, and you can pick those up at your covenant. Of course, more anima is available from other types of content as well, such as dungeons or PvP, for an example. I mean, for one there, winning your first epic battleground of the day will give you 175 anima. Anima basically is like artifact power in the past, just that, in terms of how it relates to your player power, all you need to do is get 1500 a week to get that renown level, and past that, your anima is basically just used for things that don't matter to your player power. One of the things anima is used past getting that weekly quest is to upgrade your Covenant Sanctum. It is also then used to purchase Covenant cosmetic rewards and both purchase and upgrade the Covenant gear set. Then the other weekly is freeing souls from the Maw, and that's basically just something you do by, well, going there and following the quest. Look, these two weeklies are not that hard at all. They really do not take too long. Okay, there is one other source of renown in the game, and that is the Covenant Campaign. So you will get one renown level for doing each leg of the Covenant Campaign, and each leg of the campaign is also locked behind having a certain renown level. So to explain this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through a few weeks of Shadowlands renown gains so you understand how it'll play out. On week one, you'll be able to do the first chapter of your Covenant campaign. That's going to get you one Renown level. You'll then, of course, be able to do the two weekly quests, giving you two more Renown levels. So, you'll start at level one, you'll earn three levels, at the end of week one, you will be Renown level four. And by getting to Renown level four, the rewards that you will get are a 2% boost to your stamina, an upgrade to your first soul bind, and a fresh adventurer for your Covenant's command table. I haven't mentioned the command table yet, but don't worry, more on that later. On week two, your two weeklies will bring you up to Renown level six, and then the campaign quest that you'll be able to do will bring you to Renown level seven. And along the way there, you will unlock a cloak transmog and the ability to further upgrade your unranked PvP gear, plus an upgrade to your first soulbind. And by the time you hit week seven, so that's a few more weeks, but by the time you hit week seven, you will have completed the entire Covenant campaign and you will be Renown level 22. What about the next 18 Renown levels? Well, those quite simply are just earned at a rate of two Renown levels per week by doing the two weekly quests. And that does mean that you will be level 40, Renown level 40, that is 16 weeks after the Shadowlands expansion releases. And as you go up these renowned levels, you are going to unlock more and more things. 
Now for player power concerns, you will unlock more soul binds. And then within those soul binds, you will unlock more rows, which means more player power. You will also unlock things to purchase from the Covenant vendor. And there's a lot here. It's things like new transmogrification gear, mounts, pets, and more things even past that. Hell, even a hearthstone that will take you back to your Covenant, which is super handy to have. You'll also unlock more companions for the command table. Now, if you are behind the Renown curve, uh, as I described here, right? Like if you make a fresh character 10 weeks into the expansion and you're worried you're going to be weeks and weeks and weeks behind everybody else, do not worry. There is a catch-up system built in from the beginning and basically it will allow you to, you see those weekly quests? You'll, you'll basically just be able to do content and keep on doing content and just get more and more renown levels until you're caught up with everyone else. So there is a catch up system built in. If you do get a bit behind, there is zero reason to worry or zero reason to stress. It'll be okay. With the Renown system covered, let's talk about Sanctum upgrades. So your Covenant Sanctum, which is the big building for your Covenant, that can be upgraded at the Covenant Sanctum upgrade NPC. Now, all four Covenants have got a transport network, an anima conductor, and a command table. Then, each Covenant will have its own unique feature. Now, for the Kyrians, it is the Path of Ascension, which is uh, basically a boss rush. For the Vanthyr, it is the Ember Court Party minigame. For the Necrolords, it is the Abomination Factory, and then for the Night Fae, it is the Winter Queen's Conservatory. And that is basically a farming minigame with puzzle elements. Now, let's dive into each of the buildings for these covenants. The transportation network really does do what it says on the tin. It will offer you faster travel around your covenant's home zone. Now, as you upgrade it from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, you will unlock more transport locations as well as other benefits. Now, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to use the Carrions as an example here, but for theirs, they'll get a speed boost after teleporting. Then at level 2, they'll be able to make their own transport node for the transport network, uh, you know, on a not permanent basis, of course, but they'll be able to do that via their Covenant ability. Then, at level 3, that transport node that they make can be used by their party members. Pretty sweet. At level 3, each each uh, Covenant also gets a direct link to Ouroboros, which is uh, pretty fantastic for saving your Hearthstone as well. So that is the transportation network. The Anima Conductor is quite the system, actually. It allows you to activate content in different parts of your Covenant's home zone. Now, this is something that can be done once per day for a pretty minimal cost of Anima. And each time that you do it, you'll actually fill up this little bar. And that bar, when it's full, will let you permanently keep one of the regions of the map activated at all times. So, what do I mean when I say activate content? Well, what that actually means, and again, to stick with the Kyrians as our example here, uh, their initial two options, one of them activates a rare mob to fight, and the other one activates a special treasure in another one of the regions. Now, the two Anima Conductor upgrades let you channel Anima to more and more regions of the map, as well as multiple regions at the same time, with those regions having things like an elite fight, extra world quests, um, extra daily quests as well. Now, as time goes on, you'll upgrade that building, and then by, you know, filling the bar on your Anima Conductor, you'll be able to permanently activate more and more of the zone. And after quite a while, you'll have a situation where you'll have Anima flowing all around the place, and you'll basically just have a lot more going on in your Covenant's home region. And what that's going to mean is more rewards for you. You see, the Anima reinforced areas can get, uh, well, they'll give you rewards called Grateful Offerings. Now, these Grateful Offerings are used as a currency when you're purchasing many of the cosmetic Covenant rewards. So, if you want those mounts, if you want those transmog sets, the illusions, yeah, be sure to work on and upgrade your Anima Conductor and to do the associated content. Now, as you upgrade that Conductor, you'll also just be able to activate uh, more areas at the same time. And uh, yeah, basically, the more you do that, the more you'll be able to earn Grateful Offerings and the more you'll be able to afford those very nice and attractive cosmetic rewards. 
Next, we have the command table. The command table is Shadowlands' version of the mission table that we've had for quite some time. But there's good news, because unlike Legion and BFA, it actually expands upon the concept, making it a bit more tactical, a bit more interactive. Essentially, it's a bit of an auto-battler. So if you look here, right, you can see the enemies that you will face on a mission. And then if you look below, you can see the slots where you can actually place your companions. And the placement actually does matter there. So your companions have got their own different traits, uh, many of which are actually positional. So to make it very simply, you know, you could put ranged in the back, melee in the front, you could best arrange their traits to counter the opposing units, and then once the timer goes, you'll be able to see the fight play out and hopefully get your rewards. Overall, it is a very welcome improvement on what had become, I think, a very stale system. Now, as you do more missions, you'll be able to level up your companions, and doing so will increase their stats and make them stronger. You can also recruit troops, which are basically just disposable units, to fill in any slots that you may need. Now, there are two upgrades for the command table, and they're pretty simple. One decreases the amount of time that it takes for your companions to heal after they take damage when they're doing a mission, and the other one just reduces the time taken to actually do missions. It's simple enough, really. And if you're wondering about rewards here, well, it's pretty simple. There are reputation tokens, anima, and a few other things as well. So generally, you'll just want to keep these rolling, and of course, they are also something you can interact with on the go using the World of Warcraft companion phone app. Okay, so I mentioned the special buildings earlier. The way it works is, yes, they are Covenant-specific, and each one of them really is its own gameplay system. It would be way too much to cover in depth in this video. Seriously, there's actually quite a lot to them. But uh, don't worry, the game tutorializes all of that stuff. What I will say, though, is that each special building has got unique rewards for that Covenant. That includes a unique tint of their armor set, extra cloak transmogs, extra weapon transmogs, things like that. It's pretty good. Now, beyond those Covenant-specific rewards, there are also rewards shared between all Covenant special um, you know, special activities. Now, those include four mounts, um, you know, one themed for each covenant, as well as a selection of weapons that are themed after each covenant zone, as well as some pets. And really, each minigame, it's got its own gameplay, its own progression, its own upgrades, of course, when you're actually getting it upgraded with the Sanctum Upgrader NPC. And now for that, you know, the Abominations, in terms of perks anyway, the Abominations from the Abomination Factory of the Necrolords can give you some handy gameplay perks just out in the open world. The Queen's Conservatory can give you some crafting reagents, things like that. Now, these are not going to be important features if you're a cutting-edge player, right? They're not going to make you more powerful, really, or anything like that. They're basically just a bit of fun on the side, and they've got some neat rewards in the cosmetic realm that some players will be interested in trying to get. Now that we went through all of those buildings, you might be wondering how you actually upgrade them. Well, it's pretty simple. You use two resources, anima and souls. You get anima by doing stuff in Shadowlands, right? You'll, of course, want to get your 1500 anima to do your weekly, but past that, yeah, you can just go get as much as you want. It doesn't actually matter for player power, but it will help you do things like upgrade these buildings a bit faster. So you'll get that from World Quest, Dungeons, PvP, the mission table, just a whole lot, right? Souls, then, are earned in the Maw, and you'll learn all about that when the game just tutorializes it in the Maw Soul Collection Weekly Quest. Now, do note here that at Renown level 15, you will receive an upgrade to your Soul Keeper, and basically what that means is you'll be able to rescue more souls each week, which does mean that after you hit Renown level 15, you'll get more souls per week, and you'll be able to upgrade your buildings a bit faster. Okay, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? There's so much to go over, even on a high level for these, that you might just be wondering, oh, whoa, what, do, what do I do here? Well, it's actually deceptively simple. So for everyone, no matter what, for everyone, you want to do your weeklies and you want to do your Covenant campaign quests, right? Do all of that so you get your renown levels, and yeah, there you go. Now, in fairness, you will be able to catch up that stuff pretty quickly, but you'll want to do that. And then, all of that extra work, well, it's a bit different. In past expansions, you could just grind artifact power and grind artifact power to make your character ever so slightly more powerful. You can't really do that with, uh, you know, with Anima in the Shadowlands expansion because as it pertains to your player power, you need 1500 a week 
and that's it. Any extra anima that you grind out, well, that's just going into aesthetic things, you know, covenant upgrades. So if you care about the aesthetics, those cosmetic rewards, then yeah, do consider getting into the unique covenant activity, farming up extra anima, getting as many souls as you can, and doing the anima conductor content every single day, because of course that will get you the resources that you need to actually purchase the cosmetics that you will unlock as you move through the Renown Bar and as that progresses. Really, it's quite simple. And it's that sort of thing where Blizzard have made it so that most of the time-consuming work is tied to optional cosmetic rewards, not really stuff that's going to feel like a mandatory grind that you may be feeling like the game was trying to nudge you to do against your will, like what happened in the BFA expansion. And that's basically it for Covenants, right? If you get this video, then there you go. You've got all the information you need to hop in game and process all the various different quests and markers that the game throws at you. And speaking of cosmetics, hey, if you want to support us, you can get the 2020 edition channel pin, the Demon Hunter pin as well this month, as well as the big old set of art. And of course, over on Patreon, behind the scenes content, summary access stuff as well. A whole bunch. There's loads going on there, including as well our daily gaming news service. All pretty fun. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. I know a lot of people I've talked to have kind of looked at all of these currencies and systems and moving parts and they've got really confused and I totally empathize with that. And the, the real goal for me with this video was to just lay it all out at a high level and uh, hopefully help people understand what they're actually gonna be doing once they ding. So hopefully I succeeded in that. Uh, do let me know if I did. Anyway, that's it for me. Stay tuned for a lot more content on this channel in the coming days. And uh, most importantly, enjoy Shadowlands. All right, that's me till the next video. I'll see you next time.